Hi, I'm Matt. And I'm Dave. And in this Magento 2 Basics tutorial, we're going to take a deeper look at cache management in Magento 2 together. Now, in a previous video tutorial, we showed you how to clear out the cache in Magento 2. But the thing is, is that what are we actually clearing out? And is the cache management actually important? And what do all those different terms mean in when we're in cache management? And when should we enable our cache? When should we disable it? When should we flush it? And this video tutorial is just to make cache management a little bit more human, if that makes sense, Dave. Yeah, so because I see the list and I know how to clear them now, but I don't know which which ones do, if that made any sense. <laughs> <laughs> that does indeed. So with that said, let's jump across to our Magento system. And remember, you can follow us along with your Magento 2 system as well at the same time. So with that said, let's get across to our desktop and we'll catch up there with you in a few seconds time. Dave, let's get into cache management and we can find that underneath system and then cache management underneath the tools menu. Now, Dave, first view of this screen, we've seen very similar options in Magento 1.9.x, haven't we? We have, yeah. There are a couple of extras in here, and we will be looking at these different types of caches in more depth during this video tutorial. But before we do that, Dave, I'd like to just explain the on-off method and why that would be important. So why you would want these caches enabled and why you would want them disabled. So as you're building your Magento 2 website, so maybe you've added a theme or maybe editing your Magento theme and getting your store set up, instead of having to come in here every two seconds and clear out the caches, which can become quite tedious, the best thing for you to do is to disable the caches. Now, this is really, really simple to do. On the left-hand side, drop down the Mass Actions menu and then choose Select Tool and then for the drop down above there, choose disable and then submit. And the reason why you'd want to do that, so that any changes which you make in your configuration files, you don't have to come in and then clear out the cache and then go back to your Magento website. If you've been and disabled your caches, that means the vast majority of all any changes which you'll make will then immediately come out on the front end of your website, which just expediates things. So you to imagine, Dave, you don't have to come here, clear out the cache, and then go back again. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, no, totally, yeah. But when you're ready to get your Magento site live so that customers are going to be using your Magento 2 website, this is when you're going to definitely want to come back in and enable the caches on your Magento website. And to enable the caches is really straightforward. So again, it's just a repeat of the process before. So mass actions, select all, but this time enable and then hit submit. And then you'll probably want to then flush them out. Now, we're just doing it ad hoc, so all of ours are gonna be fine, but you may have some of yours which need to be refreshed. And to do that, just again, mass actions button, select all, leave it on refresh this time, and then hit submit, and then all your caches will be cleared out. Now, Dave, what I'm gonna do now is gonna go through the different types of caches which we have. So can you see on the left-hand side, we have configuration, layouts, block, HTML output, like what on earth does that mean? Yeah, reflection data, I've not seen a mirror on Magento. <laughs> so what we're gonna do, we're gonna run down these. The first one is configuration. Now in short, Magento collects all the configuration from all the modules, merges it together, and then saves the merge result to the cache. Now that cache also contains store specific settings stored in the file system and in the database as well. Now you'll have to clear out this type of cache after modifying the configuration files. So Dave, as we get more used to, and as you get more used to changing configuration settings within your Magento 2 store, it's typically the configuration one, which will trip, and then you'll see the red box on the right-hand side telling you that you'll need to refresh that cache. And the reason for that, it's got all our configuration settings in there. So if we change some, we've got to update the cache. Dave, I also feel that I've missed a, like a daft point here as well. Turning the cache on makes your website run faster. Turning the cache off makes the website run slower. Just pause there just to stress that one. That's why I was saying, as you're setting up Magento 2 store, then turn it all off. Just disable them all. So you can go and see the changes live and there's no lag on there. But when you're ready for your Magento 2 site to go live, turn it on and then it's faster for your customers. 
Coming back onto the topic, the next one is layouts. Now, layouts, they are the compiled page layouts. That is the layout components from all of the other components. So that would be the one column, the two column, the three column, those kind of elements on the page. Does that make sense, Dave? Yeah. Next, we have block HTML output. Now, these are the HTML page fragments per block. Okay, that's kind of a bit nerdy, but as you can imagine, the blocks, uh, your page is made up of lots of several different blocks. That's a cache of the blocks. Again, it means that the pages can load faster. The next one is collections. This is basically caching the database queries. So if necessary, Magento clears up this cache automatically, but it is also worth noting third-party developers, so third-party extensions, which you can add to your Magento 2 store, can also put data in any segment in the cache as well. Now, Dave, the next one we've not seen before is DDL. And basically that's the database schema. Oh yeah, because I remember reading that Magento 2's whole sort of database architecture is so much different to Magento 1. Yeah, so we've seen EAV, which is the next one. Part of the changeover was to use DDL, and it's just basically database cache. <laughs> That's the simplest version of it. There's a lot of other specs which go with it, but it's just the database schema, if that makes sense. So again, it's a type of cache. It expedites the loading of your Magento site for your customers. The next one is EAV or Entity Attribute Value. Now, I'm not gonna go into this one in too much depth, but basically Magento lives and breathes EAVs, attributes. Again, Dave, we know product attributes, yeah? Yeah, yeah. When we're creating a product, the name is an attribute, the price is an attribute, we may have custom attributes, but then there's also system attributes as well, just setting the store locale to United Kingdom. That's another type of attribute. And Magento lives and breathes these. Now, in short, they are cached. And again, that's one of those prime examples. Instead of having to look up in the database or going back through the files, et cetera, et cetera, to find out what the cross relation of values are, having them cached will make your Magento 2 website run faster. Next, we have full page cache. Now, caching and Magento 2 is a bit of a weird one. Okay, now I don't want to go into this one too far because we cover full page cache in Magento 2 off in a separate video tutorial. But in short, out of the box, Magento 2 comes with a full page cache mechanism, and that falls into two versions. You either have their inbuilt cache, which I would personally suggest using, and you have also another caching type called varnish cache. Now, very, very simple synopsis of those is that one of them will work on shared web hosting, and the one with varnish cache has to be a dedicated environment, which makes it very difficult. Great for bigger websites, and by the way, I use varnish myself on some of my own personal projects, and it does make the front end of the sites which I'm using it for run lightning fast, but on the flip side, it can be tricky to set up, and I, Dave, I wouldn't class this one as a Matt or Dave friendly kind of caching mechanism. But coming back onto the topic, full page cache, basically Magento is gonna create cached pages of your site. So maybe a contact us page, maybe product pages or sections within there, and it just means that your site's gonna run faster. Now, the next one we have is called Reflection. This is another new one to Magento 2. And basically clearing out this cache removes the dependency between the web API module and the customer module. Kind of makes sense if you've used the APIs before, but that's a new one to us. Next one is Translations. Again, another new one to Magento 2. So this is the merged translations from all the modules. Again, expediating the delivery of your Magento 2 site to your customers. The next one is config integration. Again, another one to Magento 2. So this is the compiled integrations. Now, this is when you've been changing or adding integrations to your Magento 2 store. By the way, if you have no idea what I'm talking about there, then you should very rarely need to clear that one out unless you've been doing something quite advanced. The next one is again, another new one to Magento 2, which is the config integration API or integration API configuration. This is just basically your compiled integration APIs. Now, if you've got no idea what I'm talking about APIs, then again, you probably won't ever be clearing that one out, but it will be available there to you if you need it. By the way, that last one, the config integration API, we can't see that on our page right now. That one's only available by the command line. Ah, right. The nerdy bit. <laughs> the nerdy bit. Okay, so you don't actually see that on the list. That one's just available by the CLI environment. 
And then finally, the last one is the web services configuration. And again, you'll see it's being called as REST or, and SOAP configurations and the generated WSDL file. This is great for using third party applications. So imagine you maybe got an EPOS system or you've written a custom script to interact with your Magento 2 site. Then if you're making changes, then you can also clear out the cache for this one on you can have that cache. And by the way, you definitely normally want that cache so that it when not your normal customers like Joe Public, which comes to the front end of your website, this is generally used for either third party applications or something which you've written yourself to interact with your Magento store, maybe to collect your orders so then you can process them in a third party system. You've also got that cache type there. Now, Dave, there are five other types of cache which are kind of glaringly obvious when I point them out on the screen. The first one is your flush cache storage. So that's the whole cache storage. Okay, and if you click on that one, you will do get a pop-up window on that one. The cache storage may contain additional data. Generally, as a rule of thumb, after you've been in added to an extension to Magento 2 site, is that you want to come in here and clear out these two caches. The second one is the Magento cache as well, and you'll see that one's a button, one's not. They're just two different types of caches. And then down at the bottom, Dave, the other three are the images cache. So Dave, when we go to a product page, Magento does actually make free versions of the product image. And again, it makes a smaller thumbnail size so that maybe when there are like a related items module, for example, you see the smaller size image. Then on the category list page, then you get a slightly larger image. And then when you're on the product detail page then you get the huge image, just a nice performance thing, which Magento, well, is it, it was in Magento version 1.32. I can't remember exactly when, when that was put in, but it was a very, very long time ago. Again, brilliant for making your Magento website run faster because they'll give different sized images based upon where your customer is on your Magento 2 site. And Magento makes caches of those. So if you maybe you've been and changed one of your images, for example, or a collection of your images, then you can clear out your images cache there. The second but last one is for JavaScript and CSS files. So if you're having those merged or combined together, okay, which you generally would want in a live environment, then if you do make a change to one of your JavaScript or one of your CSS files, then you want to come in here and clear that out so that those changes then get applied immediately or from then onwards onto the front end of your Magento website. So maybe you've changed from orange to blue, for example, that that CSS style will then take effect. And then the last one is the static files cached. So you can also clear that one out as well. Again, slightly nerdy, but not going overboard. No, I think it's nice that we've had like at least a top level overview of what the different caches are and what they do. Because obviously it's dead easy, isn't it, to hit flush Magento cache or flush cache storage and not worry about what anything else does. But now that we know what each sort of cache is doing and what part of the site is touching, I think that just gives us a little bit more information. Yeah, it's a step up from what we were doing before, because let's face it, 99% of the time, we're just going to come in here, choose select all, and then hit submit for refreshing the caches, and then pay absolutely no attention to what they are and why they're important. And just remember it, at the end of the day, the Magento cache management is in there to make the front end, the part which your customers see, run faster. And again, it's actually kind of quite noticeable. If you go in here and turn all your caches off and then go to the front end of your website and start navigating around and then come back, enable them and then navigate around again is that it's quite noticeable between the two. And like I said, this does go off into a deeper hole when it comes to like full page cache. And again, by the way, check our YouTube channel or over on understandingne.com for more details on the full page cache. And yeah, Dave, that's it. Cache management, deeper level. Does that make sense? Makes sense to me. Happy days. So for myself, Dave, and of course, Matt, too, we sincerely hope that you have found this little bit nerdy, but very interesting tutorial helpful to you and your business and maybe broken down some of the barriers that you may have thought that caches were. You, know, you might have thought they were a little bit nerdy, a little bit scary. And well, they are. They are. Not scary. They're a little bit nerdy. They are a little bit nerdy, but now they're not scary at all because we know what each one of them is doing. And yeah, we'll probably just refresh them all anyway. But I guess what matters now, Matt, is if we see a warning message about a certain type of cache, we'll know exactly which part of the website that's referring to. 
Yeah, so if we need to clear the config cache, the reason for that is because Magento stores the configuration of our Magento site as a cache to make our, the front end of our site run faster. And of course, if we just change the configuration setting, then hey, we need to update our cache in our Magento 2 site so that those changes then get reflected on the front end of our Magento 2 website. Right, let's leave it there. So from myself, Matt. And from me, Dave. Cheerios. So from myself, Matt. And me, Dave. We hope that you found this video tutorial helpful. If you have, then let us know by leaving a thumbs up on this video below or subscribing to our YouTube channel. We believe to use Magento, you don't need a degree in Nerd. And we've created you over 300 step-by-step -step video tutorials at understandinge.com to help you. In these tutorials, you'll learn how to use Magento with no prior knowledge. How to build a fully responsive Magento website for just $99, which is about 65 quid. How you can use Magento to sell on eBay and Amazon with M2E Pro. And you'll be joined by over 6,000 fellow business owners just like you. And the best part is, it's free to join. So for myself, Matt. And me, Dave. We'll see you there. Cheerios.